Okay, so, hi, this is example number six of section 17.4. So we will calculate the reactions at point O just after we cut the cord. That means that it's the initial of mo motion. So that when they tell us that it's the initial of motion, the, the information that we are receiving is, for example, that the angular velocity of the system is equals to zero because it's initial motion. We know that for the solution, the first thing that we want to do is uh, set up our coordinate system. We could use tangent and a normal system. We can use x and y. Let me just go for the traditional. We can use, for example, x and y. In previous example that I shown you, I used tangential and normal. We have to do our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram. And we will make those two equals for our equation of motions because you know that the external reactions or the external forces applied to the system are equal to the kinetic forces generated in my system. So for our free body diagram, we have our sphere, right? And now we have our slender rod. And then what do we have? We have the weights, so this is 30 pounds, and this is 10 pounds, and then we have our reactions at O, and using my coordinate system that I chose to use, this is O, X, and Y. And then I have my kinetic diagram. And since I'm moving in a respect to a center of rotation, so O is a center of rotation. So my center of mass of my rod and the center of mass of my sphere will move in a circular motion respect to that center of rotation. So if I'm moving in this direction, I will have a tangent acceleration and I have a normal acceleration. And here it will have a tangent acceleration. So let's call that from the rod and the mass from the sphere and the tangent acceleration from the rod, from the rod and the tangent acceleration from the sphere. And I have a normal acceleration from the sphere. Tangent acceleration for a curvilinear displacement is angular acceleration times distance. And the normal acceleration will be angular velocity squared times distance. Since we have initial motion, this will be zero. And then we have only tangent acceleration. So actually, those two variables, this is zero, and this one is zero as well, because we are in initial motion. So the angular velocity is equal to zero. So we only have tangent acceleration and of of course, we also have our due to rotation. We have also our the in mass moment of inertia because those are rigid body. Once we have distribution of mass, we have to consider mass moment of inertia. When we were talking about particles, those were our only accelerations. But now we have to take into consideration that we have distribution of mass respect to that center of, of um, mass, so we do have our inertia times alpha, and here we have also inertia and alpha. So once we have distribution of mass in a rigid body and we have rotation, we always have to consider mass moment of inertia times the angular uh, acceleration. So now that we have our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram, we use our equations of motion. Let's add forces first. From our forces in x, we have Ox. And we do not have any acceleration in x, because we said that the normal acceleration, which are the ones that are in x, are equal to 0. So from here, we already found our first result, that the force in x direction is equal to 0. Then we have our forces in y. 
And then we have the two weights and our force in y. And that will be equals to the two mass acceleration in the tangential direction, which will be equals to following our uh, coordinate systems. Those are negative as well. So that will be mass of the sphere, tangent acceleration of the sphere, mass of the rod, tangent acceleration of the rod. So at the end, we have 40 plus OY equals 2. The mass will be 30. And the tangent acceleration, we know that is alpha times R. So that will be an R, which R is equals to the, the distance between the center of rotation to my center of mass. So in this case, the R for the sphere will be 3, right, 3 feet, and the R for the uh, rod will be 1 feet. So here we have 30 times 3, right, times alpha, negative 10 times 1 times alpha. So here we get our equation, which is negative 40 plus O Y equals 2. In American units or British units, the weight is primary unit, and the mass is a derived unit. So we have to divide here by our gravity. You remember that, right? OK, now we got it. Let me, let me erase here. Give me some space. So it will be negative 40 plus O Y equals 3. 0.016 alpha negative. So that's my first equation that I will use to find the a reaction in my pin and my alpha. And finally, we have the moment. And so we have to decide which point we like to take the moment about. We could calculate the mass of the whole figure and calculate it from there. Or we can calculate from O, which since that point do not have any motion, the equation is just the, the mass moment of inertia about that point times alpha. That equation is longer, but it, all the other terms become zero because that point do not have any motion. So here we have to calculate that. That will be the addition of the sphere, right, plus the rod, right? And we have to use the parallel axis theorem to be able to calculate those two. So that will be the mass moment of inertia is 2 fifth mass times radius of square plus mass of the sphere times distance square. And the other one will be, the one from the rod will be 1 12 mass times length squared plus mass of the rod times the distance squared. That distance will be 1. So let me calculate that. That will be then b equals 2. 2 fifth. Here again, we need to divide the weight gravity times that r, which is 1 feet squared plus the mass, again, 30 over 32.2, then the distance, which already we said that is 3 squared, plus 112, the mass of the slender rod, which is 10 over 32.2, for the length, which is 2 squared, plus the mass, 10 to 32.2, plus that distance, and that distance is 1 squared. OK, all those values, I have that calculated here, and it is equals to 9.72 slugs for feet square. OK, and then I can write my equation. So which one are the uh, forces, external forces that do moment respect to point O? That will be this weight which this weight is located at 1, and this weight, which is located at 3. So that will be one, 10 times 1 plus 
30 times 3 equals to 9.172 and that alpha, which is my uh, angular acceleration. So that's my second equation. So solving 1 and 2, I can have the solution. I will write it right here. Alpha is equals to 10.9 radians over second square, and OY is equals to 6.14 pounds. This is my solution of the two forces. Of course, I have the other result that I needed right at the beginning, which is OX. So those are what we were asked to find, which is the reactions at point O just after it could, the rod was, the core was uh, cut. You can also see the solution in the PowerPoint presentation.